Hi everyone, thank you for joining me in another episode of our Excel in Excel series and this episode is gonna be about pivot tables. So this has been requested by a few of our followers in Facebook and our subscribers in our channel. So if you want to suggest any lessons, just comment on the video below. I will be checking it uh, and uh, join our Facebook page like our page uh, facebook.com slash coach or hit me up on Instagram with the same username so it's just at coach for all my accounts and um, maybe you want to subscribe and there's a few of this in the pipeline that I'm gonna be churning out in the next few weeks so this topic is very close to my heart and this is a quick story time when I applied for the first time, I, my actual first job interview was at Manulife. And Excel is part of that because I was applying to be part of their accounting workforce. I did have a lot of experience using Excel for projects, for worksheets, for finance, financial statements, and even a little bit of um, macro coding on the side. However, this topic was not familiar to me because... I didn't really chance upon pivot tables until I started working. So I didn't have any idea of how pivot tables work. So when they called me for the practicum part for for the hiring process, I was uh, we were given a task list and the end result would be a pivot table. So it was actually a 45 minute long exercise and I used 10 minutes on the first 14 steps. And for the rest of the 35 minutes, I was googling how to make the pivot table. Um, long story short, I wasn't able to output a pivot table. I eventually get, got a job offer, but I, I didn't end up working for Manulife. And uh, later on, I, as you may now know, if you, you have been watching my videos, I worked in IBM. So in IBM, I was taught how to use a pivot table by my colleague that's actually Sunshine. I don't know if she'll end up watching this video, but anyway, Sky, uh, Shine taught me how to use a pivot table and this is the simplest way I can get my message across so join me and uh, we'll be talking about pivot tables right now okay so in this um, sample excel file so if you're a fan of Game of Thrones some of these things would be familiar to you so in this table the first column would be the battle number so this the first battle would be Battle of the Golden Tooth and so on and so forth. And then this would be um, labeled this as the battle name. So you can um, use the first row as the header for all your, your columns. You just have to make sure that all columns have um, labels. This um, tool for Excel can apply um, to any group of data or any table that has um, column headers. So if, if I, for example, I key in data here and I create a pivot table for columns A to F, it won't work. So here in the alert, it says the pivot table field, ne field name is not valid. To create a pivot table report, you must use data that is organized as the list with labeled columns. If you are changing the name of pivot table field, you must type a new name for the field. So there. So I was just showing that to you before I walk you through it, that each row would have to have a header. So the first row would be the place where you could put your headers. So... Um, now, going on to creating your pivot table, there are actually um, two ways to create it. You can either select all the cells, so you can use your shift and then shift control down or shift command down if you're using a Mac like me, and shift command right. This would select all the non-empty rows and columns on your sheet, unless you have the space. You have a space here. For example, if there's 40 here, uh, that trick won't work because what will happen is if you're coming from if you're coming from the top and you use command shift down or control shift down, it will skip the first row it encounters that has no 
data for that column. Yeah, so you have to watch out for that. But anyway, whatever trick it is that you use to select your cells, you can use it. You can even use your mouse. So when you create a pivot table, you have to select your data and click insert on your uh, menu bar and then click pivot table. So you are in fact inserting a pivot table onto your worksheet. Another way would be just to select any cell from your table and just click pivot table and let Excel decide which cells to include. So as you can see here, it goes from A1 to E39 and if you can notice here, E39 would be the last row that has data in it. So Excel does a pretty accurate way of determining the bounds of your table. However, if you stick by this way, if you select your data and click pivot table, or if you let Excel auto select, you will notice here in the table range. So this is your this is gonna be your main source for the easiest way to create the pivot table. We will be going through the, the advanced steps in another video um, coming up soon. But anyway, in the Excel language, if there's a dollar sign, it means that this will not move. This will not adjust. This is the specific cell that it selects. So here, the raw tab, so raw tab, and then exclamation point, this is the spacing between the table, uh, the tab name, and then the cell. So A1 and E39. The problem with this um, way of selecting data would be if, for example, I create a pivot table, let's click OK. Just, just for the sake of showing you, if I select uh, all the rows to contain the battle name like this, what will happen is, um, in case this is a running file, if, for example, I'm reading the latest book and there's another battle for 39 and I put here battle of the brains just for for an example and I go to my pivot table and I refresh this it will not include the battle of the brains so it's not included because our pivot table only includes up to cell 39 so this would not apply for for stuff like if you're doing metrics for your team or doing a class list and then another person joins in Unless, unless you go to your tab, to your table, and um, insert a line here. So, for example, I insert another line here. And just for example, I put in battle of the bullies. If I go to my, my pivot table and I refresh here, and I check my data source, you will see it moved to E40. That is because the, the Battle of the Bullies is included in this pivot table. See, here in um, row 42. Because it was inserted between E1 and E39, which, is our, which are our original parameters. So your option would be to insert between the beginning and the end or my favorite trick is to just do this. So I will delete this just to show you. If you're pretty sure that you're going to have to add additional rows to your table later on, one trick that I usually use is I just insert the pivot table and select columns instead. So the one way would be to just uh, select the number here and delete the, the row number. So right now, it's just showing that my table would be all the data between column A and column E. And if I click OK, this will work. So if I, for example, show you the data, um, battle name, just like before. So right now, it's showing... It's showing 40 items 
because it includes let me show this in a bigger font so but this one it shows a blank that is because it it shows you that um past row 39 are blank fields for battle name so if you don't want to see the blank there you can just click here in the filter and by label you should uh, you could you could click in does not equal blank there and uh, it will not show blank anymore so that's one trick that I usually do because the difference right now is if I do that if I select the columns instead of the actual specific cells I can insert data over here number 39 like I tried to do before and key in battle of the brains and this time when I refresh if I refresh this that entry would appear on my pivot table right now here it's a column it's a column a row 42 it shows battle of the brains so you can have a running list uh, a list that can you can actually refresh from time to time it can give you real-time data so that's the beauty of, se of selecting columns instead of specific cells for a pivot table um, now that we have discussed um, the, the ways to select your data or the, to select your source data for pivot tables let me um, discuss how pivot tables work the four boxes here on the pivot table fields area show filters columns rows and values the field name box actually lists down all the names of the the data here the first row so battle number battle name defender king attacker one attacker two that would appear here in the field name if you put the if if i put battle name as a filter instead of a uh, instead of a row it appears here as a filter field so you can use this to choose what which battle names would appear on your report for example defender king here in rows it shows all the different unique defender kings for the column bat, uh, column defender king so if let's switch this up to make so that it will make more sense if for example i list this one lists all the battles and this the defender king field um, lists all the unique values for defender king i can select all the battles that Rob Stark Stark participated in as a defender. So this would uh, filter the data that would appear on your pivot table. So that's what the filters um, portion is. So the rows portion would be, uh, as you can see here, what will appear on the vertical side of your table. So it lists down all the battles. The columns area would be would also list down whatever types of data. Are available in that column so for example um, I key in the attacker one here so right now it's showing all the um, attacker attacker one choices for Rob Stark so Rob Stark actually fought defended against Balon and Euron Greyjoy Joffrey and Tommen Baratheon and those are the two types of attacker one um, values that are available there so that is how pivot tables work. Um, just for a better example, let's put a value here for the fourth part, which is the values. I can put in the battle number here. And uh, because our battle number column, is, uh, it consists of numbers. So it's one number was 1 to 39. Excel actually suggested that it shows the sum of the battle numbers. This is problematic because it doesn't show you the actual number of battles. It, it, it adds up all the values. So as you can see here, it totaled to 148 battles, which is not true because, as you know, we only have 39 samples. It's not um, accurate. What I will do is I can click this and choose to modify it. So, at, so I can click that. And summarize it by count if I use summarize by count it will show me that for Battle of Torrance Square um, Rob Stark defended an attack from Balon and Euron 
for Battle of uh, Duskendale, he defended against Joffrey and Tommen, and so and so forth. So in total, Rob Stark defended against Balon and Euron Greyjoy once, and Joffrey and Tommen Baratheon nine times, for a total of ten battles that Rob Stark defended against. So I think you get the bet a better picture. Pivot tables are used especially if you have so much data. For example, let's remove this filter. So right now, let's select all. So you can see here all the list of the counts of battles. Yep. And then let's hide the blank like I showed you before. So by label does not equal blank just so we don't see that additional row there okay yeah blank is not there anymore yeah so now it has 39 rows let me refresh this one okay now this column still has a value of 1 and the beauty about pivot tables is, for example, I'm looking at this and I'm saying um, the ba this battle could not have been fought without um, without an attacker, right? So who did who attacked whom for Battle of the Burning Set Tree? So what I can do, what the pivot table is actually excelling at for in terms of function is you can drill down this problematic case by just double clicking so just select that um that value and the double click now it's showing me that um for battle number 23 the battle of the burning set 3 the, the defender king cell and the attacker cell are empty so what i can do to fix that is to go to my raw tab select um column uh, row 23 and just fill in data here so if I fill in data here, what will happen when I refresh the pivot table is so I can I can I can right click here at any point of the pivot table and click refresh. So the blank column would be empty except for two other items. So all these two other items also have the same problem. Um, attacker 1 is an empty cell. So here, um, attacker 1 is an empty cell. So you can use the pivot table to drill down on data. So your pivot table is actually summarizing all the battles. If, for example, um, I was asked to only display the battles where the defender is Rob Stark and he defended against Joffrey and Tommen, I can double click this number 10. Because there are 10 bat battles, I can double click 10 and it will only show me the 10 battles that Rob defended against Joffrey and Tommen. Like so. So that is the beauty of pivot tables. And this works even for amounts. So it creates a new tab with your drilled down data. And that's how pivot tables um, create magic. Especially if you're working with numbers. If you're, for example, listing down costs for a specific region, it can give you a sum of the costs, an average of the costs, and uh, other functionalities. So I'm gonna cut this video for now and just um, encourage you to try it out. Um, do not pressure yourself because Excel is a skill. You can start by taking baby steps. So once you've mastered how to manipulate the data, on your pivot table fields, everything else will go easier after that. So I encourage you guys to create your table or ask a copy of a table for, from me. I can give it to you and you can just um, play, with, play with the data. Uh, move around all the items here and then you can see how you can manipulate your data to look exactly the way you want it to look. We'll be talking more about the pivot tables in another video, in a series of videos. Um, I just want to keep it um, simple and bite-sized if you're starting out. So if you're looking for more functions, if you're, you have a specific Excel problem you want me to show you how to fix, just comment on the, <laughs> on the com comment box below. So if you want to be notified in case I have new videos, just click subscribe and click the, uh, the bell icon so you'll be notified in case I drop 
um, any other other videos and uh, thank you for joining the community and I hope uh, this video helps you excel and excel I'm really excited to learn with you see you around the YouTube space God bless and good night